We are getting close to the time when students will be returning to campus, and uh, one of the concerns that that I've had leading up to this this time is. Um, I don't want students to feel isolated. And I know this is a concern that many people in our college community have. Um, we don't want students to feel isolated, to feel lonely, because so many of the social opportunities that um, campus life normally affords um, are not going to be available this semester because of COVID-19. And so we don't want students to feel isolated from the community though, isolated in their dorm rooms. And, and that can lead to loneliness, it can lead to depression, it can lead to a whole host of other issues. And that's one of the reasons why we're, we're really encouraging people more than ever this semester to, to be connected with a small group Bible study. We'll have multiple ones that we offer, and it's a, it's a good way of, of connecting, not in a large crowd, right, but in a small group of people um, to, to connect in, in prayer and to be connected to the church and to the larger community through them. But I know another concern that people have about returning to, to campus life is, is in fact the opposite. They're not so much worried about being isolated during their time on campus, but I know for some, their worry is they don't feel like they're ready to re-enter into the, the normal or what has been normal pace of society and, and an increased uh, amount of social interaction. And I can sympathize with this because I feel this way myself as, as a more introverted person. The decreased amount of social activity that we've had over the past five months has really been a blessing for, for me and, and for my wife, who's also an introvert. And, and I know many of you because it's afforded us an opportunity to step back from the level of social involvement that we have had and to take a break. Uh, I mean, practically, yes, it's opened up more time in our schedule for prayer, for reflection, for meditation, and that's all good. But just on a human level, it's enabled us to rest. And we need that. And, and, and we feel more refreshed. And we're afraid that if we jump back into things, you know, with both feet, um, that we'll just be worn out and exhausted again. So how can we mitigate against that? How can, how can we plan our, our time as we approach the start of the semester to maintain the good parts of this lower level of social interaction? And I think we can take an example this Sunday from our Lord in, in the gospel. So the gospel that we get for this Sunday is about Jesus multiplying the loaves and fishes. Right? The crowds are there. He's healing the crowds. The disciples ask our Lord as it approaches evening, do you want us to send them away because they're going to need something to eat? We don't have any food. Our Lord says, no, there's no need to send them away. Bring what food you have. Uh, there's about 5,000 people there, and all the disciples have are five loaves and two fish. Jesus takes the, the loaves, and he blesses them, and he breaks them. He gives it to the people, and it says they all eat and are satisfied. And so obviously this miracle um, ties into the Eucharist that we celebrate on Sunday where the priest takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it to the people. So there's a Eucharistic element here. But what I want to focus on is the beginning of this gospel passage. Because before all of that happens, before that miracle occurs, before Jesus feeds the people with this miraculous multiplication of food as a prefigurement of, of him feeding us spiritually with his very body, look what happens first. This begins with Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, whom you must remember was his cousin, when he heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. We begin our gospel reading this Sunday with Jesus going off to a deserted place by himself. And so often in the gospels, we hear Jesus doing the same thing, usually right before he's about to perform some great act in his ministry. He first goes off to a deserted place by himself. And here it's in response to this, you know, troubling news of the death of his cousin, whom you know he loved. He goes off to a deserted place to be by himself. Why would our Lord need to do this? Well, as God, as God, Jesus, of course, does not need to rest. He's God. God has no need of rest. As, as God, he, he's not going there to figure things out, right? God already knows exactly what he's going to do. But our Lord is also human. He's a, a, a full human being. He has 100% human nature, just as he has a divine nature. And in his humanity, 
our Lord has the same need for rest that we do. Our Lord has that same need for isolation, limited periods of isolation, as we do, so that he can be not really by himself, but just away from the crowds to be more focused on being present to God the Father. So when things trouble him, the death of John the Baptist, or when he needs to prepare for something that, that might be taxing on a human level, ministering to the people, healing the sick, multiplying the loaves and the fishes, our Lord withdraws by himself right, to be with God. You and I have that same need. We're human beings made in the image of God. God knows that we have a need for rest. In fact, he commands us to rest every seventh day. This is, this is part of the Ten Commandments, to keep the Lord's Day holy. And now there's all kinds of theological reasons why we should worship God on the Lord's Day. But on a real fundamental level, the God who made us, who designed us, knows that we have a need for rest. And so he commands us to rest. So let's take a page from our Lord's book here, and especially if we, if we have anything that's troubling us, anything that's laying on our hearts, or if we know that we're about to, to enter into some task that, that will tax us, that will demand a lot from us. Let's take that time, let's be intentional about it, to go off into a deserted place, even if it's just closing the door to your room for a little while and turning off the, 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 the television, turning off the music and just creating that space of silence. And go to that deserted place and be by yourself so that you can be more present to God, so that you can relate to God better, so that you can relate to yourself better and then when you enter into the world and you enter into all of the social environments and the interactions and all of that, you'll be able to relate to your neighbor better and love your neighbor more because you're, you're taking that time and care to love yourself more by giving you that rest that you need. Praised be Jesus Christ.